Welcome to Redbird Buzz. I'm Rachel Kovis from Alumni Engagement. Today we are sitting down with Emmy and Golden Globe award-winning actor, comedian, author, producer, singer, Redbird alum, the one and only Jane Lynch. Jane is known for her many television and film roles, including Glee, The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, Two and a Half Men, Only Murders in the Building, Julie and Julia, Best in Show, and The 40-Year-Old Virgin. She debuted on Broadway in the production of Annie in 2013 and recently finished her stint in the revival of Funny Girl this past year. Her work on and off camera has earned her many awards, accolades, and a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. And now she can add ISU guest artist in residence to her credentials. So without further ado, what's the word, Redbird? Can we discuss the reason we're fortunate enough to have you here in a School of Theater and Dance studio with us today, Jane? Well, I am directing a staged reading of Neil Simon's Lost in Yonkers. Yes. And this was all my idea. I called Al Goldfarb, who used to be the, uh, uh, the dean, and he was also the president. Uh, or, or the head of the department of uh, theater arts, and I was uh, a student in his uh, theater history class, and we've kept in touch. And I said, "What can we do about maybe getting me in there for a you know few weeks to do this?" And by the next morning, it, it we already had it scheduled. And here you are, and here I am. So why now? Why did you want to share your expertise with our school of theater and dance students? Well, I was in. Um, Funny Girl, and I hadn't done theater in a long time, I mean a really long time, and I was talking to some of the people who are in the uh, the chorus, and they're, you know, wonderful dancers, And uh, but they, they, I noticed they didn't really have any acting technique, no offense to all these people, because they did such a great job, but I thought that might be a really fun thing to do, is yeah. to be with some young folks and take a play apart and because I learned at ISU how to think like an actor and how to um, take a play apart and uh, I learned how to act here so I learned the technique so I thought I would uh, you know, share, share my expertise which sounds rather um, uh, highfalutin but I, 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 di I did want to you know kind of take apart a good old American play something that stood the test of time nothing new and weird and avant-garde but kind of straightforward with a you know, uh, with a lot of um, pathos uh, in, in, within the comedy, and Lost in Yonkers is certainly that kind of play. Yeah. And so in three weeks, you'll have how many students perform a stage reading of Lost in Yonkers then? We have two casts. Oh, all yes, right. Yes, so there's okay. uh, uh, one cast will perform on Friday and one cast will perform on the Saturday, the, the 5th and the 6th of May. Mm -hmm. And so there, plus the narrator who reads the uh, edited down stage directions, mm -hmm. we have um, uh, 15, because someone's doing two, in two casts. So there's 15 actors, and we have uh, three folks doing um, you know, stage management and mm -hmm. assistant directing. So it's just been a joy. Small group, yeah. and um, you know, it's, it's been kind of our time together, those four hours every night, to just take this thing apart, and we're having a really good time. And I mean, there's, it's just uh, a joy. I mean, the talent here has kind of blown me away. I wasn't expecting this level. I really wasn't. Great. And that's um, amazing for us to hear, too. And like you said, our students are so talented. And mm -hmm. they want to show. They see you do great things, and they're hoping, I think, to be like you someday. So to have you back here, it's truly amazing. Yeah, well, they'll be their own version of themselves yeah. for sure. I'd love yes. to hear that. Yeah. And but So now a different version of you. How does it feel being in the director seat? You're in a whole 180 now. You're a yeah. student here and now a director. So what's I, that like? I like it. I, I like, um, not that I like being the boss or anything. I don't necessarily like that. I, I have to kind of step into that and have a little more confidence in myself uh, because indeed the director is the, uh, the sh uh, captain of the ship. But uh, I, I'm really enjoying working with the actors and I love to analyze. I love to take things apart and I love to talk to actors about acting. So I get to do that. Um, and it's, you know, I'm, I'm not, I don't have that, white hot ambition that I used to have to act to, to like do another role and like people will say what is your what will be your next big role and I don't know and I, I kind of think my next big role is to be a director and so here's a great place to start that's exactly ISU. what I wanted to no, no, do it yes. kind of brought two 
of my desires together in, in one um, candy bar, as they say. I love it. Yeah. So while you're back on campus, is there anything fun you have to do, right? Like you have to go to Avanti's. I saw right. you, yes, right? Because you were our unofficial tour guide for Illinois, and that was right. one thing you did mention was I Avanti's. I did. But, yeah, uh -huh. I haven't been to Avanti's yet. Okay. But we're going to do that um, next weekend. I think on Saturday I'm going over to Al's house, and we're going to have some uh, Avanti's. And I discovered a terrific coffee shop called uh, Coffee Hound. Mm -hmm. I'm there every morning. Mm -hmm. um, I highly recommend it, and I, I also recommend that you don't add a shot so to your drink because I am so wound up right now, you guys. I'm doing everything no, no, I can no, no. to restrain myself. Yes. You're doing a great job. Then. Thank you. So, I'm, well, I'm holding onto a bottle of water, but it's shaking. You can't uh -huh, see it. Uh -huh. It's acting. I love it. Um, so going back then, you're a director now, but your time as a student. So what was that like? What was a typical student life for Jane Lynch when you were here in the 80s? I don't remember. Okay. Well, that's Honestly, fine. Moving, moving on to the next on. question. No, but I will, I will uh, elaborate and pontificate, as okay. is my want. Um, it's so funny. It was over 40 years ago. No, it wasn't. 40. I think it's 41 years ago. Okay. And um, it's almost like it didn't happen. <laughs> I, but I walk on campus and... And I go, oh, I'm having a faint, faint remembrance of, mm -hmm. of this, of the quad, mm -hmm. where I lived at 211 North University, which is now a um, ROTC yes, building. Yep. And I was at Hamilton Witten, which doesn't exist anymore. Mm -hmm. I used to live on, in Hamilton. And um, I, of course, I walked by Centennial West, mm -hmm. and lots of memories yeah. will we'll, um, pour forth. But for the most part, I feel like it's um, I'm, I'm experiencing it anew. And I will say this, it's cleaner. <laughs> it's sparkling. Good job, you. I, I wonder. Yes. Yeah, yeah, it's like it's sparkling. Even Waterson looks good. Mm -hmm. And I used to think that was such a kind of a, um, a an ugly part of our landscape. But mm -hmm. it looks it looks great. It looks like they cleaned it up or something. I don't know. Yeah, no, I love it. So forty years, we don't age, we just get better and better. You just get ice. better and better. <laughs> yeah. It's really and, and the students are there's a, a maturity and a self possession about even like freshmen, I meet a, a freshman, and I don't remember being, or at least feeling, that um, uh, confident and that sure of myself. I, I, if I do have any memories, it's a feeling kind of small and hoping that, um, you know, I get cast in the next play yeah. and that I make friends. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the typical yeah. college student. Yeah, yeah, yeah I yeah, guess. Yeah, 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 but I don't see it in them. I'm yeah. just like, wow, these. these I'm sure I they've got it did. somewhere, but these kids are really you know, like more evolved than I was. Well, and I have to, being from the alumni engagement office, mm -hmm. your sister was here overlapping times, right. Julie. So yeah. did she, I mean, first off, first question, how was that having a sister here? And then second off, did she influence you in being a Redbird legacy? I've always been curious. We, everybody, oh, I had a group of girlfriends and my sister was one of them in high school. And we all came here. Okay. All, oh. with, with a few exceptions, all of us that went to college came here. Uh -huh. So this was the place to go. Um, I actually, and at the time, it was it was easier to get into ISU than it is now. Mm -hmm. But this is the only school that accepted me. I was turned down by I was waitlisted in Carbondale, <laughs> and and ISU accepted me. And my father breathed a huge sigh of relief because I didn't have great grades. I was like a solid C minus okay. student, um, and my ACT I think was like thirteen. Yeah, that's pretty embarrassing. That's okay. So I, I you grow as yeah, a person. Exactly. So my sister had come before me, and it's funny because we're we couldn't be more close now. But she would walk right by me on campus. Stop it. She'd just walk right by me, just like oh, I'm like a little embarrassed of her goofy little sister. And then she was in a um, sorority. She was a Delta Zeta. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I never saw her. Okay. So it was funny that you know we were sisters and we never saw each other. Never the twain shall meet. <laughs> All right. Well, and she's a teacher now. She's oh, retired, yeah. but she sure. she learned to be a teacher here, and she taught uh, basically kindergarten and first grade. She loves the kiddos. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and so do you in your own way, too. So you both have that, you know. We kind do. Of yes, We're both cancers, to too, yes, which yeah. is the astrological <laughs> sign of the mother. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> and so besides, you know, maybe your sister didn't have that kind of inspiration now, but or then, but she has it now. Indeed. You You were inspired by other people when you came to ISU. Yeah. So can you talk about what it means to find that mentor and yeah. who your mentors were? I know you talked about Al already, yeah. but um, how that helped you through your college career and maybe into where you even are now? Well, uh, Al has become my mentor and good friend in the last, like, 20 years. Okay. So it, it, oh. not necessarily... He'll tell me stories, though. Remember when you came to my office? And I don't remember. And you said, and you were upset about this, and I and I told you this, and you felt better, and I don't remember. 
I don't remember. I do remember being scared to death of Jean Scharfenberg. Okay. Well. She was a teacher in the theater department, a, a legend. She was wonderful, but she could also be uh, kind of cruel. And I wanted her to pay attention to me, and then I didn't want her to pay attention yes. to me. Yes, and I remember a couple of actors to this day, and I bet if I saw their work now with 40 years of experience under my belt, I would still say they were amazing actors. Karen Hott and Lee Ebden. Um, great actors. Uh, yeah, so I learned a lot while I was here watching people who do it well. Yeah. What, great, you know, what great advice for then our current students and prospective yeah. students just to sit back yeah. and watch and not yes. always have to be. Exactly, yeah. because... Um, you know, if you're not cast, and I was, but usually in smaller parts, and then I'd go semesters without being cast. Really? So you end up doing something else, like being an assistant director or um, working, you know, on the costume crew or something like that. And, you know, I would much rather have been on stage, yeah. but I learned so much watching. And I did something that I think was unique and couldn't have been a bigger lesson for me. The URTA auditions, which are the regional auditions for the summer theaters and the graduate programs. One year, it was at ISU, so that meant all these kids from the Midwest came to ISU to audition for all these programs, and I volunteered to be the timer. You get two minutes, three minutes, or something like that. And um, I was terrible at it because I didn't call, I didn't call anybody on time because I felt too bad. But I got to watch all of the auditions. So I got to watch a variety of people at a variety of levels, and I learned so much. And I learned so much about how to present yourself mm -hmm. in an audition. Mm -hmm. um, the ones that you go, wow, was that great? And the ones you go, oh, wow, they missed an opportunity here. They looked scared, or they looked like they didn't care, they didn't prepare, they didn't do their work. So I learned a lot watching. Yeah, okay. So really, everyone, take advantage of the outside yes. opportunities. It's very, no matter where you are in your career, really, too, I would say. It, oh, always absolutely. take advantage of your opportunities. Of you never know what's going to happen. Yes, oh, yes. Absolutely. Absolutely, and you know we're um, right now we're in closed rehearsals, but we're going to open them up uh, starting Monday. Oh, okay. So, uh, or, or I, whenever we go to the theater, yeah. I forget if that's Monday or not. So, um, you know, if you're in the theater department, I think we're going to restrict it to the theater that makes department. Sense. But yeah, uh, come on by if you're an acting student and, and watch. Yeah, just mm -hmm. watch people working, and mm -hmm. uh, you learn so much. And you've learned a lot since 1982 being at Illinois State. I and I mean, from that point, you just rose to fame right away. Yeah, right. right. It just happened like <laughs> that, my friend. Straight up. Right. So, but I think I, you know, I did my research and um, you, you know, you went to Chicago, you did Steppenwolf, mm -hmm. you did Second City, and then there was a Frosted Flakes commercial. Right. So let's talk about, I mean, I'm sure some have heard about Frosted Flakes, but where did Frosted mm -hmm. Flakes and Tony the Tiger fit in with <laughs> yes. my trajectory? Well, I was, I was auditioning com for commercials in LA a lot, like okay. four or five times a week, and I auditioned for a Kellogg's Frosted Flakes commercial. And it was basically improvisation. And I got called back. And when I went to the callback, it said director Christopher Guest. Mm -hmm. So he was directing that commercial. But we didn't know when we did the initial um, uh, audition. So I did. I, I, he cast me. And so I did this uh, Kellogg's Frosted Flakes commercial about Tony the Tiger with an actor named Sean Masterson, who mm -hmm. um, I, I had known for years, too, as an improviser, a really great actor. And we played husband and wife, and Chris came up to me at lunch, and he said, you know, I do movies. And I said, yeah, yeah just done um, uh, Waiting for Guffman. And I was like, yeah, yeah, I know, because I, I fell out of my seat laughing watching that movie and had a preposterous fantasy that one day I could be in a movie like that. Mm -hmm. And he said, maybe we'll work together again. And we did. He yeah. cast me in Best That's in Show. Cool. Yeah. And then it all took off from there. Yeah. 230 it, credit, like, credits on your IMDb. Is that everything. right? That, yeah. Maybe I went and counted, Jean. I have maybe. Did you? Trouble. That's great. <laughs> you don't yeah. have to. I did it for you. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> but, but no, truly, though, you have so many big and, and television screen credits. You've been on Broadway. You have your own traveling holiday show. You've done C. Jane do. Singh. You, I mean, you've done so much. Um, mm. So how does that how does that make you feel, knowing that you have all this underneath your name now. Yeah, uh, I, I guess I don't think about that too much. Okay. But it is, you know, I think it's, uh, it, someone would say, why do I have so much? Because you'll notice that some of it's, you know, it's like a guest spot. Yeah. And you won't recognize the name of the character because I was in for, like, just a scene. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I think this works for me. This might not be somebody else's way of doing things. But I said yes to everything because mm -hmm. I love doing it. I, I, um, I never wanted to do anything else. I'm not qualified to do anything else, um, but it was Except really. Listen, you can listen. You yeah, can yeah listen. right. You're watching. Exactly. 
And, and the reason I listened and watched was because I'm, even though maybe I wasn't getting the roles that I, I never thought I deserved anything, but that I wanted, um, I, I had this compulsion. Okay. And have you heard of a, a, ever heard of a weeble? Those those um, toys when I was growing up. It just it says the weebles ball. wobble, yes. but they don't yes. fall down. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I was a weeble. <laughs> oh, that's a good analogy. Yeah. I love it. Get right back up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you know, going with that, everyone knows you as. Sue Sylvester from Glee. Right. I mean, and we love that. But I will say, only murders in the building with Steve Martin. Gosh, I laughed so hard when you were the person that came out as his stud double in that show. Um, you've been on Criminal Minds. You've been on, you know, just even shows like Psych. And then, you, like you said, Two and a Half Men. You just go and say yes. How do you decide on those roles? And how do you figure out your character so quickly then? Well, I'd never decide on a role. Okay. If it's offered to me, I say, say yes. yes. Okay. And I think anybody that is in the position, if you're an actor, you understand this. Unless you're a star, um, if you get offered something, I remember George Clooney said a story uh, about some s stupid thing he did that people said, why did you do that? He said, when I got the phone call, I jumped up and down. Mm -hmm. Same thing. Okay. You get really, really thrilled that they invite you. Mm -hmm. You know, he go off and you do the audition and there are many people auditioning. Mm -hmm. And if, you, if you're the one that they choose, it's a big deal. Mm -hmm. It's a big deal. So I, I choose nothing. Yeah. I, I am chosen. Um, ooh, that's a beautiful thing. Someone write that down. Yeah, no kidding. Don't oh, no worry, it's on camera I now. I choose nothing. I am chosen. Um, uh, yeah, so uh, uh, I didn't choose anything. But I, I do I make decisions fast. So I don't like to be in that position of, pondering mm -hmm. what I'm going to do. Yeah. You don't have the time to do it when you get offered something. Well, right, right. So I, that character. I, I make quick decisions. Yeah. And that's why I'm really um, grateful for the technique that I learned here because they're usually, those decisions are based in something. Uh, they're based in the character and the given circumstances because that is now second nature to me. Mm -hmm. So um, and that's why you said, why do I... Uh, yeah. uh, how could I? How do I build the characters for each one? And it wasn't really even building; it was just kind of things just snap in. Mm -hmm. I go, okay, this. Oh, this is how this character is. Oh, and this is how this character is. And you do it fast, and you make a strong decision because they want to see strong decisions. Mm -hmm. um, they don't want to see like kind of mealy mouth stuff. And I, I'm just not. I'm not. I don't tend toward the mealy mouth. I kind of go fast. Well, and that's why they keep telling you, asking you to come back and yeah. do guest roles and do this and do yeah. that. And it's sense, certainly say one yes trajectory it, yes. in an actor's yeah, life is to do that, and it's, it's, and it's mine. Yep. <laughs> I mean, like we said, you've earned a lot from it. So you, kudos to you. You do amazing work. Oh, so thank you. Um, and then with that, though, what has been your most memorable moments, whether it's on screen, off screen, personally? What What's something in your life that you are most proud of that? You look back on. I forget. Right. All right. <laughs> no, 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 I, will get, that <laughs> I will give you an answer. I really do. Um, yeah. It's not that I have a bad memory, but I'm not really sentimental. No, yeah, that's okay. But no, let me answer it in okay. a way, though. Don't move on so quickly, so sorry. young lady. Um, I think, you know, in a general sense, when I think about um, being in this business and in, in not just film and television, but the theater, it's being a part of a group. I love ensemble work. I love where um, one of the things that we do right before rehearsal is everybody closes their eyes and we talk about how we are all one cell of one entity. And there really is no one more important. Like, is the liver more important than the heart? No. They're, 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 they build this body politic. So though you might have a role in this um, uh, uh, this this project, you're not more important than the stage manager. Yeah. We're all the same, but we do different things. And uh, that is my favorite thing, is, you know, like when I would do those comedy improv, those comedy uh, uh, ensemble films mm -hmm. like Talladega Nights or 40-Year-Old mm -hmm. Virgin, Virgin or um, Role Models, you know, it, Paul Rudd might be in it and Will Ferrell and, um, you know, uh, Steve Carell, but the best joke always wins, mm -hmm. and they were mostly improvised too. A lot of it was improvised. Um, you know, we, we good solid scripts, but they let us add stuff, yeah. and everybody was equal, right. even though it was Steve's film or, yeah. you know. I so, that. and I love that. Glad I didn't jump over that question then. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, okay, me, this hopefully this isn't too sentimental either. But mm. what's your biggest life lesson you would share either to someone maybe starting out mm. in acting, someone that's looking into theater as a prospective student, someone mm. that's been in it for a while? What what kind of oh. advice do you or biggest thing you've learned so far? 
I, I would say don't have goals. Mm, like, yeah. I want to do this by this age. Yeah. I want to play these kinds of roles. Because then you paint yourself into a corner and there might be something right in front of you that, you, that passes by you that you don't say yes to. So I, I think ultimately the thing I would say is just relax and be kind to yourself and don't try to push yourself too hard. Don't try to push the river, as the, as, um, uh, the mystics would say, and kind of just flow with it. And you're taken care of. Everything's going to be taken care of. And your part is to allow and, you know, to do your work and be prepared. Yeah, great. Yeah. Great. So uh, with that, let's. I'm going to flow right into what hopefully is a little fun for you. Um, our kind of like I hope it's fun. For I hope me it's. Too. Fu- I hope it's fun. We're not I'm wasting her time. She mm-hmm. loves being here on Redbird Buzz Podcast. I do <laughs> love being here. So uh, just a few things. Just because we like to get to know our alums better and yeah. our guests better. So let's start off with just some easy questions. First thing that comes to your mind. Okay. Favorite animal. Dog. Yes. <laughs> when I'm not at work, I'm. Drinking coffee. Yeah, we heard. Yeah, no double <laughs> shots, guys. No. Um, hmm. Game show you would want to be a contestant on. Oh, 25 words or less. And I have several times. I love that game so much. <laughs> Favorite ice cream? A uh, mint chip. Mm, okay. I've had that twice now. Mm. Favorite actor you will work? You like to work with? Uh, uh, well, I worked with Meryl Streep, so that's mm, great. And yes. I le- worked with Steve Martin, so yeah. so there you go. There you go. Yeah. Uh, can you play, uh, get up that? Uh, favorite podcast? Oh, um, Jeff Mara podcast. Oh. Look it up, Near okay. Death Experience. Okay. Yeah. I was going to say, no, so not smart list by Sean Hayes. We'd love to see you on this podcast oh, now. Oh, <laughs> I would love to be on his podcast. Too. Is he still doing it yes, while he's yeah, on Broadway yes. doing uh-huh. Goodnight Oscar? Yeah, I don't know about I that, know, but yeah. you know, I... Just had to put, throw that out there to see yeah, yeah. Uh, who you're mm-hmm. actually going to mm-hmm. say, but now I'm going to have to look up that podcast. Oh, yeah, so thank pretty, you for sharing. Amazing. I'm very big into crime junkies right now. Yeah, so, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, favorite place at ISU? Um, uh, coffee Hound. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I don't even add that one on there. I feel like we've... She really likes yeah. Coffee Hound, guys. <laughs> and how about a piece of advice you'd give to your younger self? Oh, just... I think what I just said. Okay. I have to repeat okay. myself, but no, I will. No, that's fine. You know, just relax and don't tug on the roots, which is another thing so mystics say. I love, though, that you gone from this young, you know, 40 years ago and at ISU to now, and you're living by the goals that you, or by the well, you know, advice them. that you said. Yes, I've come yes. to them. They've kind of found their yeah. way. They've blossomed yeah. inside of me. Well, yeah. and the other thing too is, you know, I've talked to so many students and faculty and staff that all have interacted you, with you in this you know, short week you've been here. You have two more weeks, two more weeks yeah. to go, mm-hmm. I think. Mm-hmm. And everything I've heard, Jane, is amazing. I've heard, you know, you've been networking students with, you know, people in New York. You are helping them with their oh, resume. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Huh? I've heard, yeah. There's some great people yes. here from our stage yes. manager. Yeah, I hooked, yes. I hooked him up with somebody. Yeah, we'll but see what happens. Just things like that, though. Yeah. So, learn, you know, teaching these students again skills that are off stage, um, talking to faculty, you know, bringing I think um, some positive and just some refreshment to Illinois State is just you being here. It's just oh. great to have you. And so I have to say that just because when I started hearing all these stories, I was like, all right, I get to talk to her about all this. Oh. This is great. So, well, um, you've been I wonderful, to... by the way. Oh well, thank you. You're very good at this. You oh, know, someone said, right. you remember, this is a small town university. Yes. Yes. Like, oh man, she's the top. Yes, go on. Yes. Um, but no, we couldn't do it, obviously, without all of our uh, team from mm-hmm. our university advancement department. So, and without you. That's why we love to talk to alums and guests like you. We love to hear your stories and Thank whatnot. So, um, before we end, I you kind of answered this, but I'm going to uh, phrase it in a different way. So, what's next for actor, performer, host, <laughs> ISU lecturer, Redbird Jane Lynch? Maybe wow. not a role, but is yeah. it more directing? Is it like what you talked about earlier? I don't know. I love and it. I never do. Um, uh, I, I'm right here and right now. I truly am. I'm at ISU and I'm doing uh, Lost in Yonkers with about 18 to maybe 20 people. Yep. And we yeah. love having you. Oh, so I love being here. Thank you for being with us today, Jane. It's been a pleasure. And that was School of Theater and Dance 1982 alum, the iconic, the talented Jane Lynch. Thanks for listening to Redbird Buzz and tune in next time for more stories from Beyond the Quad. 